Everyone can do improv um, and I think making sure you find a place where you like feel comfortable and feel welcome from the beginning is like super important but like literally everyone has the ability and the skills and the play and creativity inside them to do improv. It might take some a little bit longer to feel more comfortable <laughs> um, but literally everyone can do it. Yeah, how it's Mario World. I find improv at the very beginning for a lot of adults is mostly unlearning rather than learning. Uh, there's sort of this thing that happens where, like I said, as, as kids, we play so joyfully and so freely and it's like without, we don't have the critic in our head, right? Like we're just kids, we don't know, we, like they, they make silly, dumb, weird choices and we're not worried about people judging us. And then like middle school happens and things get rough and then high school happens and then you go out into the working world and like all of these things happen and we start inserting all these ideas around like, be ashamed of that, maybe hide that from people, protect yourself a bit from embarrassment. And so we make a million little compromises to protect ourselves from embarrassment, uh, which is part of being social, like we're a social species, that's what we do. Um, and so I think a lot of when people come into improv for the first time, if they haven't done any of the work of unlearning that, which most of us haven't, I certainly hadn't when I started, uh, a lot of it is just unlearning that. If that looks like fun, uh, from from the audience, it is fun. And uh, just then doing two two. Yeah. So cool. Yeah. So cool. So that makes me like it. Hi, so my name is Jill Eichmann, and I'm the artistic director and one of the co-founders of Leela Improv, which is a San Francisco-based improvisational theater company. Normally, when we think of improv, we're you know we're we're taking classes to be better performers, or you know maybe one day be on Saturday Night Live, you know, like all those things. Do improv comedy, you know, that's something that a lot of people think about when they think about studying improv. Uh, but at Leela, we are here for all goals, right? So some folks might be coming to our classes to work on social anxiety. Uh, maybe folks want to bring these skills into their professional life, be better public speakers. Maybe folks just want to make friends and like have a little community, you know? <laughs> Improv can seem very scary from the outside and it is a little bit when you're doing it, but I think what's important to know is that Unlike a lot of other um, sports or activities or hobbies, kind of the core of improv is being uh, supportive and caring and like making other people look good. Like the best improviser is not the single person who's like the funniest, it's more like who makes everyone else that they play with look better. <laughs> You're always building with other people, so you're never really on your own. It's like having like a nice family to do things with who will always look out for your best interests because we're all working towards the same thing to make something that is really fun for us as performers, but also like delights an audience. So, I want to be teacher's pet. <laughs> <laughs> I want to succeed. I want to be good at the thing. And the euphemism for that is teacher's pet. Yes, no subtext at all. How often and like you're a nine to five, do you get to just like be silly, right? Yeah. And without judgment. <laughs> yeah, I just, I don't know, I just thought I was being, you know, fun and kooky. I thought that's what everyone thought. That was so interesting. Uh... And I think that's the beauty of improv is you know it's gonna be a judgment-free zone. So you like have that permission to just like be a kid or be random or do whatever you want. <laughs>
so obviously during the pandemic, uh, improv was hit really hard as all live performing arts were. Um, and there was some effort to kind of put it online uh, and not to begrudge anyone who put improv online, but to me, improv thrives as a live art form. There is something magical that happens when a group of improvisers get on stage in front of an audience and we're all in this space together. There is like this insane connection that happens and it manifests as laughter and tears and all of those other wonderful, fun, visceral responses our bodies have, but it's, it's irreplaceable. It's impossible to replace. And so COVID was a really hard time to be an improviser. And I'm very grateful that we're getting back to uh, being able to do it in person because I think watching improv recorded, seeing it in video, it's, or seeing it on Zoom, it's just not that dynamic. You just miss out on this, this vibrancy. It is like fire. It is absolutely alive. Uh, so go see a live improv show. That's my plug. Go da, see a live improv show. Da, da, da. You can freeze frame there and then put an ad. It's like, see live improv shows here. There we go. I don't know what I'm doing. Is that an ad? This is like my Vanna White pose.